Hey guys, what you're about to see is a public service announcement that I shot recently um, that I was inspired to shoot after meeting a young man named Christopher Francis. Uh, you see, Christopher suffers from, uh, from unfortunately, a pretty common disease um, known as cowboy stealer disease. Uh, it was an affliction that affected a bunch of young men born in the 1970s. And, um, and it, uh, it caused them to become cowboy and stealer fans, regardless of their uh, home state or their family's fandom or their state affiliation or even if their state had a uh, had a professional team they still became cowboy and steeler fans <clears throat> because they were winning a lot of world championships and they became um what they used to call front runners uh, we don't use that term anymore you know it's uh we've, we've come a long way and we don't say that word anymore uh and i apologize if i offended anybody but um when i was growing up they were called front runners and um that's what this young man, Christopher Francis, obviously was. Um, anyway, uh, more broadly, this is about um, knowing what you're talking about when having a conversation about sports. Uh, far too often, people will go to a party or a bar or another social event and just have no idea what they're talking about. And um, they'll be discussing the greatest baseball player of all time, or they'll be talking about um, the greatest soccer player of all time, and they'll they'll mispronounce Pele's name, or they'll um, they'll insist that uh, I don't know something even sillier that maybe uh, Emmitt Smith was one of the greatest running backs in NFL history. Well, when I given the opportunity to, to set the record straight and to do this public service announcement, I, I jumped at it. And I wanted to thank Christopher for inspiring me um, to start this movement and try to help people like him. Um, anyway, so uh, please uh, enjoy the content uh, that's to come that follows this and um, Christopher, we're all pulling for you. Uh, we hope that, that you can get better. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Let's talk about Emmett Smith. Because Emmett Smith is the all-time rushing leader and the all-time touchdown leader for running backs. So he's widely considered the greatest running back of all time, especially by people in certain parts of the country, the parts further south and closer to Mexico. <clears throat> um, if you really break it down and you're objective and it's none of this nonsense about Smith and, you know, albeit a great running back, had tremendous toughness, longevity, uh, which for running backs, you know, is not a common thing in the NFL. One running backs last, I, I forgot what the average is for an NFL running back, but it's something like the career average for an NFL running back. When you factor in all the guys who make it, don't make it, injuries and everything else is something like six games. That's the career average. And this guy played 15 seasons. 15 seasons and rarely missed time. So there's something to be said for that. But let's be honest about Emmett Smith, okay? Let's be honest about what it means to compile stats and what it means to be that kind of player. Now, he's reliable and all those other things, but people put him at the top of their list, which is nuts because I have 10 backs easy above him I actually have 15 to 20 but it starts to get a little more subjective so what I've done in order to do this is, is I've narrowed this down they must have at least 10,000 yards rushing which eliminates guys like Terrell Davis who for a four-year stretch was outrageously good it uh it eliminates a guy like um Bo Jackson who's objectively a better running back than Emmitt Smith you know he was a much better athlete but he played such a short period of time got hurt He's obviously not in the conversation. So these are guys, you know, that um, the guys that make my list are guys that played for a long enough period of time to amass a lot of yards. Um, and let's take a look at them and how they stack up against a guy like Emmett Smith. Okay. First, I'm just going to give you my top 10 and I'll give you my top 10 in no particular order. Okay. So don't think I'm ranking them. All right. You got OJ, hell of a running back, really terrible person, but great running back. Uh, Jim Brown, Barry Sanders, 
um, Curtis Martin, Marshall Falk, LaDainian Tomlinson, Marcus Allen, Walter Payton, Tony Dorsett, Eric Dickerson, and Adrian Peterson. And I think that's 11. I think I might have just listed 11. So let's eliminate Curtis Martin, all right, for the sake of this argument. Let's take Curtis Martin out, even though I think Curtis Martin was a much more dangerous back than Evan Smith. He was more. He was much more adept at catching passes out of the backfield. He was better picking up um, the blitz in the backfield. But uh, for the sake of this argument, I'll tell you why in a second. Well, let's, let's take Curtis Martin out and let's replace him with Adrian Peterson. Okay, so all the guys I just listed have at least 10,000 yards rushing. M- most of them have many more than that, uh, north of 12,000. But since I said 10,000 is the benchmark, let's leave it at 10,000. Every single back on that list has a higher average yards per carry for their career than Emmett Smith. Every single one. Every one. Emmett came in at 4.2 yards per carry for his career. He led the league in yards per carry in his 15 seasons behind the most dominant offensive line in NFL history. That's right. More dominant than the Hogs in Washington. More dominant than than the even the Green Bay the vaunted Green Bay Packers line in the '60s. That offensive line with Larry Allen and all the rest of those guys in Dallas was insane, insane. And anybody who watched them play knows that I'm right. So behind that offensive line, very often playing against. N- Nickel defenses because you had you had uh, Michael Irvin on one side, you had um, Alvin Harper on the other. You had tight ends who could catch the ball. They were spreading out the field. They were they were running up scores. And against that defense, with that offensive line, with that offensive line leaning on teams for four quarters, day game after game, Emmett still only averaged four point two yards per carry, which doesn't put him in the top thirty all time in yards per carry when you factor in guys who played a little less time, all right? I'm not even sure that puts him in the top 50, frankly. But then you start factoring in other kinds of players and other positions, so we're, we're not going to get into that. But let's just deal with the guys we're talking about, okay? Um, just on a purely personal level, watching him play and watching most of the rest of the guys I mentioned play, obviously I didn't see OJ play, uh, Jimmy Brown I didn't see play, um, Besides that, I watched all the rest of these guys play, and I'm telling you, just at the eye test, these guys were much scarier than Smith. They were faster, they were more physical, they were quicker in some in some of these instances. But teams had a game plan for them. Nobody game planned for Emmett Smith. Nobody game planned for Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith was an afterthought. It was Aikman and those receivers that people were afraid of. You got to remember the offense was different then. The receivers for the Cowboys weren't like weren't like speedsters. They weren't they weren't burning up the field catching, you know, deep outs. I mean deep I mean deep fly routes. They were they were catching balls because they could be physical with the defense. There was no offensive pass interference. I mean, I think it was on the books, but I can't ever remember it being called. And Michael Irvin, Michael Irvin in today's NFL, I think would catch two passes. That's how physical Michael Irvin had to be to catch balls. So these guys would just manhandle smaller DBs. They would catch passes down the field. They were slow enough that they very rarely caught these long balls and took them all the way. So they get tackled at the five. Here comes Emmett behind the best offensive line ever. And scores a ton of touchdowns. Guy's longest carry in his career was 75 yards. The next longest after that was like 62. It's not like he broke these open and ran long ways and scored a bunch of touchdowns. He scored all his touchdowns from inside the five-yard line. When that offensive line leaned on people, and oftentimes in garbage time at the end of games, they would hand it to Emmett, Emmett would rumble in, you know, he'd score 20, 25 touchdowns a season in back-to-back years behind those teams that just manhandled people in the NFC and won Super Bowls. That's who Emmett was. Emmett couldn't catch passes. He had hands of stone. Emmett was a terrible pass catcher. He was a worse route runner. They would run screens. The amount of screens that guy dropped behind that offensive line. Emmett doesn't rank. I can't even, I can't even imagine where Emmett ranks 
in in all time receiving yards for running backs, even playing the most games of all those running backs. But I'll give you a list of some of the guys who had more career receiving yards than Emmitt Smith, and you tell me how many of them you've heard of. James Brooks, John David Crow, uh, Tony Galbraith, Larry Centers, Darren Sproles, Matt Forte, uh, John Williams, Charlie Garner. I could go on and on. I could list about 75, 80 running backs in NFL history and more receiving yards than Emmitt Smith, and he played 15 full seasons. The guy was a single threat. That's it. He ran the ball. He mostly ran the ball between the tackles because the Cowboys offensive line opened up huge holes. Huge holes. Emmett, you got to remember, Emmett was incredibly durable, but Emmett rarely got hit by defensive linemen. He even rarely got hit by linebackers. He was making first contact most runs. He was making first contact with defensive backs. He was bigger than the guys that he was being tackled by 95% of the time. It's no wonder he stayed healthy. He was running these guys over. He wasn't Earl Campbell. He wasn't, he wasn't tearing through defensive linemen and running over guys who were 280. Emmett was, you know, Emmett was bowling over a 37-year-old Daryl Green who weighed 141 pounds soaking wet. That's who Emmett was. All right, so let's be real about who Emmett Smith is. Let's go over some more stats with Emmett because people always get, you know, oh, Emmett's great, Emmett's fantastic, Emmett's phenomenal. Emmett played 78 more games than Barry Sanders. 78 more games. Okay? He only had 75 more touchdowns. Now, this is a Barry Sanders who played for Wayne Fonts and the Detroit Lions, who every time they got within striking distance of the goal line, got pulled out of the game. And Wayne Fonts would put a big fullback in, and that's how they scored touchdowns. Barry was never, ever, ever allowed to score. And the guy scored 99 touchdowns in, 70, in 78 fewer games than Emmett, who scored 164. Now, how do you square that? How do you square that? Emmett should have scored 700 touchdowns in that scenario. If he had half the talent that Barry did, are you kidding me? It's not even close. It's not even close. And, and keep in mind, I don't have guys on this list like Derrick Henry, who's playing now. Derrick Henry is, runs the ball at a, a clip that's like the third, the second or third best clip per carry in NFL history at 4.8 yards per carry. But he hasn't played long enough, so I've left him off the list. But who would you be more frightened of? Derrick Henry now in his prime or the Emmett Smith in his prime? I mean, let's be honest about that. Adrian Peterson carried the ball at 4.6 yards per carry. Jim Brown a full yard more than Emmett. Now, I never played, I never saw Jim Brown play except for in clips like everybody else, but... I don't think there's any argument that Jimmy Brown was an incredible running back. And this is a time when guys were allowed to, like, kick him in the neck, gouge out his eyes. This is when running backs ran with that single bar. You know, it, it, they didn't even have full face masks on it. I can't even imagine the kind of beating that Jimmy Brown took. And he still, he still carried the ball for a full yard per carry more than Emmett Smith running behind that line on those teams. Uh, it's just, it's just completely unbelievable to me that, 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 the argument is even made. Emmett Smith was a compiler. That's just all there is to it. Emmett Smith was a compiler. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you a final example, okay? And I could go on and on about this because I, as a Giant fan, and you can take that, everything I'm saying with a grain of salt because I am a Giant fan, but as a Giant fan, I've had to hear about Emmett Smith my entire adult life. Emmett Smith this and Emmett Smith, oh, and he's so great and look at the way he plays. Think about this for a second, okay? Frank Gore. All right, now Frank Gore's been around a long time. He's a good back. Frank Gore, Frank Gore was solid. Frank Gore had, you know, Frank Gore put the fear of, of God into some teams. Frank Gore, when he was right, Frank Gore was tough, right? Frank Gore played for a lot of different teams, tough guy, a lot of yards, all those other things, right? Frank Gore had a higher career yards per carry. He only had about 2,000 yards less than Emmett for his career. Frank Gore is north of 16,000 yards for his career. He's third all-time behind Smith and Peyton. Frank Gore. He had more receiving yards, more receiving touchdowns. He, he like I said, his yards for carry were higher. He had far fewer fumbles in his career. He was better at picking up the blitz. And he played in an era when the guys were faster, stronger for most of his career. And he played on teams that weren't anywhere near as good 
as that Dallas team that Emmett played on, behind lines that weren't anywhere near as good. And where does Frank Gore rank for you on your all-time list? Is Frank Gore also one of the greatest running backs of all time because he has a lot of touchdowns and because he ranks really high in, in yards, in total yards? I mean, it, by any statistical measure, Frank Gore was better than Emmitt Smith. But nobody would even think to put Frank Gore top of their list, right? Where does Frank Gore rank for you? I'm probably saying this now. Some people are watching this video, and they've heard of Emmitt Smith. And they've heard of Jim Brown and Barry Sanders and Walter Payton. But they may be a casual football fan. They may never have even heard of Frank Gore. That's my argument against Emmitt Smith being the number one running back of all time, or even in the top 10 or 15. And I can keep going. There were plenty of guys I left out, like Earl Campbell, like... Um, God, I don't know, uh, Ricky Waters, uh, Marshawn Lynch. Think about some of the names out there. Think about some of the guys. Roger Craig, who, who redefined the position. First back to ever rush and receive for 1,000 yards in the same season. I left all these guys off this list. I'm, I'm conceding just, just so there can't really be an argument that Emmett is above those guys, which I don't think he is. But let's say he is. He's still not a top 10 back in NFL history, and people have to stop making that argument. It's done. It's 2022. We survived a global pandemic. It's enough already. Let's let Emmett rest. He went into the hall, I think, in 2010. Well deserved. Emmett's a great running back, but he is not the greatest running back of all time. He's not even close. So please let it go. If you like this content, please subscribe, like this video. I'll be back soon with some more. Thanks.